Dating is war. Being a nice guy doesn't help you at all. If you've been a nice guy, stop. Just stop. Like as one of one students know that the one and only reason for going on a date is to get laid. That is why we quote unquote ask women out. That is why we spend money on strangers, on dinner, on drinks, on movies, on concerts, whatever we're spending money on. It's because we expect to see these women naked. We do not go on dates because we want the political opinions of the little ladies. We do not go on dates because we like trying new restaurants. We do not go on dates because we need to find out if the new chocolate chip frappuccino is going to be better than the new chai. We don't need to see the inside of any more Starbucks. We have no interest in that. We don't need to meet her best friend. We don't need to meet her family. We need sex. That's what we go on a date for. And it is time for men to get back to the basics. We do not go out into situations where the result is not likely to be sex. There are certain scenarios where you will never find the like as one-on-one -on -one student. There are no daytime dates, no lunches, no Starbucks. You do not want to see her face in the light of day. This is a general rule. You do not want to see her face in the light of day. That includes you do not want to stay over her place. You do not want her staying over your place. In fact, if you can avoid it, you don't want her coming over to your place. If you can do this, you don't want her knowing where you live. You don't want any surprise visits, surprise gifts being sent to your home. You don't want any surprise knocks at the door when maybe you're tasting some other merchandise. You don't want to give your key out to anybody. You don't want them coming in when you don't want them around. You don't want to give your password to your email account, your passcode to your ATM card. You don't want chicks in your home. You want to get the job done at their place and then get the hell out so you control how much time you have to spend with them. You don't want to put yourself in a position where you are going to have to uh, tell her to get lost, to leave, to get out of the house, go get a cab. You don't want to be driving her home. You don't want to have the nightmare that happened to me. And the nightmare that happened to me once was the really hot chick I had. Well, I I uh, had a redwood hot tub back in the days when people had redwood hot tubs. And I used to have a list of broads called the Hot Tub Club. They didn't know they were members of this club. That was what I called the list, the Hot Tub Club. And the women were listed uh, on the Hot Tub Club membership list according to degrees of hotness. The hottest chicks were at the top of the list, and you worked your way down. Now, every chick on the list was hot, but the chicks at the top of the list were really, really hot. And the ones at the bottom were merely hot. These were chicks who I knew I could call at 1 a.m., 1.30, and I could have them come over to my place, frequently dressed in nothing more than a trench coat and a bikini, and they would get in the hot tub, and I would have a bottle of White Star, and some music playing, in the tub boiling hot. And uh, the idea would be, uh, within no time flat, I'd have that chick bent over the side of the hot tub, holding off a dear life as I was nailing her. There was one particular chick I had who had a, just a smoking body. She was unbelievable. But she had a really annoying voice. And she was a really annoying person. The trick was to get the champagne into her and get her up against that hot tub wall, the redwood wall of the hot tub, as fast as possible. And then point her in the direction of the front door as quickly as I could. So I did just that. She showed up in uh, like one of these London Fog raincoats, very stylish uh, rain from the raincoat, trench coat thing, takes it off, has this tiny bikini and these huge bazooms, I mean, just a killer body under this, right? And it's like uh, L.A., January, L.A., February, like it's the middle of winter here. And don't kid yourself, okay? L.A. is not Miami. 
in February at night in the Hollywood Hills, it gets below 50 degrees. And I know in Chicago that would uh, seem like a heat wave, but in L.A. people are uh, uh, people are chilly. They're they're cold and they don't like going out in that weather. So here comes this girl, takes off a Lunavon raincoat. It's the middle of February and she's got this tiny, multicolored bikini on. Which even in the dark, I could see her body and the bikini, and it was unbelievable. And that bikini came off in about three seconds, and she hopped into the tub. I nailed the crap out of her. She got out of the tub and went right to my bedroom. It was all working out as play. I said, I'll be right back. I went to the bathroom because I'd been in that hot tub consuming champagne for some time. I had to let it out. When I came out of the bathroom, there she was, this chick with the annoying voice. Kind of sounded like Fran Drescher, only with a California accent. Snoring. And nothing I said would wake her up. She was out cold. And laying on the bed sideways, by the way. So there wasn't even room for me to lie down in my own bed. I had to literally, like move her like a corpse to get her into a position so I could get into the bed. And um, I moved her, went to sleep. In the morning, I woke up. My eyes were not even open yet. There she is, her arms around me. She looks at me and she says, How come we never go anywhere? You never take me anywhere. We should go to brunch. Boys, you don't want this happening to you. You go to her place. You nail her. You get the hell out. Get home and time to watch ESPN. You want to see Sports Center before you go to bed. No waking up with her, no hugging, no caressing, no kissing, no spooning. You tell off Big Jim of the Twins and you get the hell out of there. It's that simple. Like as 101 students don't spend more than $40 on a date. If you can spend zero, spend zero. Doesn't matter how much you spend on a broad, she's already decided whether or not she's going to have sex with you. Spending more money will not change her mind. Very important to remember. Like as 101 students believe in the three strikes you're out rule. You date a woman three times, she doesn't put out, you drop kick her through the uprights. You do a little Doug Flutie on her. You get rid of her. You stop going out with her. Don't waste your time, money, or energy on a broad who won't put out. And very importantly, we don't date single mothers. They already made at least one mistake. The next time that condom slips or leaks, you're the one who's going to be paid. We don't have sex with single mothers. We do not agree to impregnate anybody as a favor. We don't have babies with people. We don't get married before age 25 or before we have realized our dreams because we know that women are dream killers. We know that women love the benefits of us having great careers, but they don't like to see how sausage is made, boys. Women are dream killers. And if you have dreams in this world and you have to take certain risks or you have to sacrifice for a while, women don't want to sacrifice. They want furniture. They want babies. They want life insurance. They want to buy houses even before you can afford down payments. They want to buy things even though you have to buy them on credit and pay 18% a year interest. They want to take away all of the possibilities of paying your tuition or taking a sabbatical or studying for finals. They want to be a family today. And if you have a dream, you don't want to tie this anchor around your neck. Now, there's much more to Lycus 101, and I can't get you all up to date in one day. But these are the basic tenets of Lycus 101. A course we teach every week at this time. You may have some questions, you may have comments, you may have complaints, you may have criticisms. And some people just downright hate your professor. Because I represent men. I'm on the side of men. And those men out there who are angry about anything I've said, I understand and I feel your pain, boys. Because I know many of you have been raised by single mothers, and you've been turned into little pussies, and your testicles have been removed. I am your advocate. You may be angry at me today, but you will see I am your friend. I am your advocate. I am your compadre. I am your, your compatriot. I am the man who is going to reattach your testicles. 
There's an awful lot of eunuchs out there, and we're going to get that taken care of. So if you have questions, complaints, or comments for your professor, we encourage vigorous classroom discussion right now. This is Earl in Apache Junction, Arizona, on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Professor Tom. Earl. Welcome to Arizona. I've listened to you for years in Los Angeles. I'm glad you're here to educate those who do not know your teachings. Thank you, Earl. And um, just dating is just a job interview for the position of husband, according to women. You know, just um, if you fall for it and you become a husband, you find out that being married is the most expensive way to get your laundry done for free. Right. And a lot of guys who get married get married because they think that's the only way they're going to get laid. Oh, no. Ten-cent chicken wings, dollar movies, take them home, hit them like a rhino, and get them out. I totally agree with you, Earl. And there's so many guys who uh, feel they have to get married. They succumb to the pressure. Exactly. And you really you don't have to do it. Can you take me out with a triple? What do you want? I want... This is Stella. Hello. Hello? Yes. Why do you like saying a lot of bad things about women? You got an issue with women? Well, dear, uh, rather than making a general statement, let's deal with specifics. What is it you object to? Well, like in general, just all the negative things. You no, 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 not in general. I want, I want to know what specific yet. things you object to, and I'll be happy to respond. Okay, like me, I'm not a blood-sucking, money-sucking leech. Okay, I have a baby daughter, a little girl. Mm -hmm. You know how I got that baby? Uh, let's see, you opened your legs to some bartender or some irresponsible individual? I said, I called a friend of mine up, just a friend. I said, I want to have a baby. Come over. I'd like to have a baby. He was a fool to agree to that. I, no strings attached. I don't share my baby with him. Well, All that's he what you say. baby making. He was a sperm bank. And well, that you. guy should not be doing that. He was crazy. He was stupid for doing it. <laughs> Basically, all he was was a sperm bank. So you agree he was stupid for agreeing to uh, well, to give you what you want, right? No. I got what I wanted. But he was stupid, even though I you got that. what you wanted. He want. ain't got to pay me no money. He ain't got to give me nothing, but I don't share my baby. Yeah, unless, yeah, yeah un unless you got hit by a bus or for some reason you couldn't work. And you, the minute you apply for welfare, they're going to say, who's the father of that child? And you're going to tell them. I work. Dear, what happens if you get hit by a bus? <laughs> I'm not going to get hit by a What bus. happens if you get hepatitis C? What happens if you are debilitated and for some reason can't go to work for six months? What if that happens to all the guys? No, 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 no. Dear, we're talking bus. about you right now. We'll get to the other guys after we're done talking about you. What happens if for some reason you can't work for a while? Do you know what the reason I called? No, no, dear. We'll get to that in a minute. What happens if you can't work for six months? I'd like to get to that now. No, no. I don't care what you'd like to do. I'm the host of the show, and I'm the boss here. Okay. And I'm, I mean, so uh, since I you refuse to answer, since you refuse, that's fine. That since you refuse to answer my question, I'm going to answer it for you. If you're you can't, I'm going to put you. I'm going to put you on hold, and I'm going to answer it because I'm not going to yell over you. What you're going to do, see, if you are uh, debilitated for six months, if you're hit by a bus, if you get sick and you can't perform at work for some reason, can't go to work for some reason, who knows, maybe you contract AIDS because you're such a slut. I don't know. Uh, what will ultimately happen is that you'll apply for public assistance of some kind, welfare, food stamps, whatever. And when you do that and they find out you've got a child, they're going to go, hey, who's the father of this child? Because he should pay. And you'll tell them. And when you do, he'll have to pay. And you'll say, well, I never asked him for a dime. But the reality is that when the government finds out you want money to feed yourself and your child, the government's going to demand to know who the father is. And you're going to turn that guy into the authorities, aren't you? Oh, look, she hung up. Because she couldn't just come on the air and blather incessantly. 1-800-5800-TOM is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Franco in Scottsdale on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. How are you doing, Tom? I'm doing great. Okay, i got a couple of points. I'll hit them really quick. All uh, right. I've been your show since uh, Monday when you came on. Unfortunately, we did, were not aware here in Phoenix that all of our local DJs were going to disappear. Uh, and 
Well, the whole format changed. Uh, that's that's what happened. I mean, there's no that's more. Fine. There, there, yeah. the, there's no music before I believe eleven o'clock at night or midnight or whatever. That's fine. Okay, my my second point is is that for someone who's been divorced four times, yeah. who are you to give advice? Well, I'm going to tell you, uh, I am not giving marital advice. You will notice I don't. Well, wait, you, if you're going to let me answer the question, I'm going to answer it, and if you're not, I'll just hang up. Okay. Yes, sir. You asked a question, I'm trying to answer. Yes, sir. I don't pretend to be a marriage counselor. I don't pretend to be an expert in keeping a marriage together, mm -hmm. and I never give advice in that area because I know nothing about it. Okay. So if I've been divorced four times, I'd be a fool to be telling people how to stay married, and I don't. I tell people how to get laid, and believe me, when you've been divorced four times, that means you've been single five times, and that means you were out there getting laid a lot. Mm -hmm. That is what I know how to do, and that is what I tell guys how to do. I also know how to tell guys to avoid getting married. Okay, I, I agree with that. And that's the kind of thing I teach here. I would never pretend to be an expert okay, on keeping well, a marriage together. I'm new to the show, so I'm glad you cleared and that, it up. And that's why I'm that's taking this time. Just so you know, that's why I'm taking this time with you. Okay. Uh, even though you came on rather strong, I'm I, yeah, clearly you're new in this classroom. Okay, and and so way. I'm trying to explain to you, and I, uh, you couldn't possibly know this, but you won't hear me giving marital advice. Okay. Okay. Good enough. Um, second point is that I heard Adam Crow on this guy's cracking on you the other morning. I'm like, I got to hear who this guy is. So my my point is that they were they were cracking on your voice and, and goofing on you. When you call Outback, do you actually say, Hey, I'm going to come in there. I'm going to have a medium rare steak, and then I'd also have to have a side of. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm like Adam Crow. I don't call Outback. I call uh, the Palm or uh, Mastros, but I I do not call Outback. I, uh, maybe Adam calls Outback, but I don't. <laughs> Nonetheless, I mean, when you get out of it, you still do the same. You hell, Kelsey, hey, over here. I mean, just... Well, again, you know, let me tell you something. I've been on the radio for a long time. This is who I am. It sounds like you. This know, is who I am. Time. This is my you real voice. Old. You sound old. Well, again, so is the purpose of this call to call in and just sit here and attempt in your amateurish way to insult me? You, you know what? It's very hard. You have to understand who you're talking to. I've been doing this a long time. A lot more no, clever, a lot more clever crank callers have called no, in not, than you. I'm not a crank caller. No, no, no. no but you are, you are, and you're not a very good one. I'm not a crank phone call. And no, the guy I, last night was way off the mark. You're nothing like Howard Stern. You're in a whole other ballpark. That's a right. A whole other ballpark. That is right. And I think that's good. You, you should be. Right. But this is my real voice. This is who I really am. And it's who I always have been. And I've been very successful at it for a very long time. Well, I appreciate you taking my phone call, and I will continue to listen. Thank you, Frank. We turned him around. Talk 800 5800 Tom. Red. Talk 800 5800 Now, let's say you were making the same amount of money you're making now when you were back 25 years old. Oh, are you, you kidding me? I'd have had more pawn. I'd have been. I'd have, I'd have been banging four chicks a day. I'd be dead. The Tom Likey Show. Like it's 101 from Los Angeles, the Tom Like It Show at 1-800-5800-TOM. If you're new to the classroom, this is the time to call in Kimball in Mesa, Arizona. You're on the Tom Like It Show. Thanks, Tom. Good to talk to you. I listen to you all the time traveling to Los Angeles. Excellent. Just about what my pants when I heard you were here on Monday. Really? Well, we're here in Arizona loving the weather, but I have a couple questions. I know this is 101, and I've been in the class a couple times, not regularly, but been dating a girl for about a year now, and I'm 25. I have a high-paying job. I've got my own house, and I'm just looking what your thoughts are on, on stepping it up. We haven't used, we haven't dropped the L-bomb, the love word, but we're just kind of taking it easy and moving together. What's in it for you to get married? Um, right now, at this point, I'm pretty independent, so there's nothing really keeping me from getting married nor jumping into it. Yeah, so there, you have nothing to gain by doing it and everything to lose. What do I have to lose? Everything you've ever worked for. And so I, so should I wait another five years? I mean, you just said earlier that... Well, again, you know, I'd, I'm asking you what you would gain by getting married. In other words... I think a companion. I think I'd be... You, ha you have a companion right now. Myself? No, no. She's your companion now. Oh, okay, okay. In other words, there's nothing you can get by being married that you're not getting right now. How about children? 
You can have children without being married. Well, I'd, I'd rather be married. I mean, I, I'm a pretty religious person, so I think having children out... Well, you're not that religious because you're having sex. No, no, I'm actually, I'm not. You're not having sex? No, no, I'm not. Really? Yeah, I'm, I'm Mormon. Oh, okay. You actually called, yeah, I, I remember you were laughing about us the other day, that here we're going to go all crazy. I think I'm, I'm the, I may be a liberal Mormon, but I'm pretty conservative on my political views. Wow. So I, I really enjoy your show. I think you're really good entertainment. Now, is your girl, uh, let me ask you a question, is she also a Mormon? She is. Is she a virgin? She is. Are you sure? I, I'm not positive. I, I, I trust her that she says she is. I mean, she's a small town girl up from the White Mountains, and and I, the term we use, she's virtuous. So, right. I, well, it is to your benefit uh, as a man to wait as long as is humanly possible to get married. Now, if you're just getting married so you can have sex, or you're just getting married because you feel that your religion is pressuring you into it. I, I would have, if that was the case, I would have got married off my mission like four years ago. I right. Mean, well, been... what I'm saying is, the, the, by the way, I don't know if you have attained your peak professionally or not, but okay, that may, yeah, that's true. That you don't want to get married before you have attained the pinnacle of your profession, whatever that is. Okay. Because women are not very tolerant of the long hours, the hard work the sacrifice that it takes to get to the top of what it is you do. I understand. And so you don't want to get married and be committed and be in a situation with somebody who's monitoring your time. And I'm not saying that you would be with other women. I'm saying in your case, um, if you have a high-paying profession, I'm sure they don't hand you that money for nothing. That's true, yeah. And when you work hard and you work late, you also live alone, correct? Yeah, I'm just getting home right now. I have roommates that help me pay the mortgage. I mean, I could pay it without them, but yes, I do have. But in well, essence, I live alone with right. the roommates. So the point I'm making, especially since you don't sleep with your girlfriend, uh, is that she doesn't monitor your time. And the minute you are living at the same place, she's going to want you to be home for dinner. When you have children, she's going to want you to come home and be with the children. And she's going to want you to uh, tone down your work life. And you can't have that happen before you've achieved your ultimate goal. Okay. You see? So um, they're getting aside the sex question, because for guys who are sexually active, I would also tell them you should get as much experience as you can get. In your case, that's not the issue. So what I'm yeah. going to tell you is that if, if you are trying to do great things professionally and you're not quite at your peak yet, you don't want to get married and settle down before you've hit that peak. On top of that, if she really loves you, she'll still be there when you get to that point. I understand. Perfect. So, so you want to wait uh, you know, at least till you hit that point. How many years do you think it'll take you for you to be at the peak of your profession? Peak of my profession? Well, I'd like to. Put, I have a five and a ten year plan. In ten years, I'd like to be retired at thirty five. Okay. Five, five years would be well beyond my. Well, maybe five years will be the peak. Maybe All two right. or three. I think. Then why don't we set that as your goal? Okay. Keep in mind, though. I don't care if you're Mormon or what you are. You are not going to get married without a prenuptial agreement. Without a prenuptial agreement. You are not going to. Uh, you're going to have one because okay. you know, and by the way, I've gotten two divorces in Arizona, so I'm very familiar. <laughs> you are not going to let a judge uh, start determining who gets the knives and who gets the forks. Yeah. And you're not going to let a judge decide how much of your money is going to somebody else who you might not be married to anymore. Yeah. One out of two marriages ends in divorce. Granted, that rate is lower for Mormons. With Mormons, I think it's it's four it's forty percent. You know, it's four well, out of ten. The whole right. That's you know what? Those are pretty lousy odds. Yeah. It's two out of five. Uh, that's okay. better than the average population, but it's still lousy. Exactly. And by the way, I, I will point out to you, Kimball, you've got car insurance. Yes. The odds are not two out of five that you're going to have a car accident today. <laughs> that is true. So you've got car insurance for something that is a real remote possibility. Divorce is much more likely than a car accident. Yeah. This is your insurance policy. A prenup. A prenup. And you will not get married without one. In other words, that's a deal breaker for you. The minute she gives you a hard time about that, you draw your line in the sand. Yeah. And you will tell her that you're not getting married without a prenuptial agreement. That You'll put it away in a safe deposit box. You'll never look at it again. You hope you'll never see it again. 
but you're not going to do it without a prenup. Excellent. Hey, Tom, I respect you as a person and as an advice giver on either end. Thank you for that, Kimball. I look to talking to you soon. I really appreciate it. Thanks very much for the call. Good luck. Even advising the Mormons here. And we're happy to do it. 1-800-5800-TOM. Michael in Glendale, Arizona. You're on the Tom Likas Show. Hello, Michael. Hey, Tom. How's it going? Going okay. Hey, you know, I was really glad that you guys popped on here from Tuesday. I haven't listened to you since Tuesday. It's now Thursday. I need my 101 class. I'm at the point right now I'm thinking about moving my uh, current girlfriend in. Been married for 16 years, been divorced for three. It's like I'm jumping right back in this Right back into the same old habit. Why do you need her to live in your house? You know what? I don't need it, but it's one of those where, again, it's all I'm used to, man. I got married really young. I the, pal, the fact that you're used to something yeah. doesn't mean it's good. Oh, no, you're we right. All, we, mean, all, we all know women, for example, who always have relationships with guys who are abusive. And if they get out of one relationship, they get into another. And then you ask them why they do it, and they say, well, I guess it's what I'm used to. Yeah. The fact that you're used to it doesn't mean it's good for you. There is no benefit to having a woman move into your house. And it's very important for you to learn to like living alone. Yeah, that's why I was, like I said, looking forward to this 101. So now, now I've got to find a way to get out of it, because now we're all serious, you know? You can be serious and not have her live in your home. That's true. That's you can true. have a relationship and not have her have the key to your place. You don't want her having the key to your place. You don't want her having her name on your checks or your ATM card. <laughs> Definitely. You do not want her knowing when you're home and when you're not. You don't want her having the password to your email account or the passcode to your ATM card or the passcode to your voicemail. You are not going to give her any of that. Even if you have nothing else going on, you're not giving that up. You're drawing a line. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. I never had my wild period. Got married young, and so... Well, and how'd that work out? <laughs> exactly, so... Well, that's my point I'm trying to make to you. Well, I'll be listening, my man. i got to listen to this uh, 101 and find out how to get it going. So. Absolutely. I appreciate it. Michael, thank you. Good luck. I'm Ashley on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How's it going tonight? Great. That's good. Yeah, I'm just calling because I think there's a little confusion about single moms. Uh, I'm happen to be a single mom in the military. I'm 27 years old. I got my stuff all together, and uh, I think a lot of the the wrong perception is, for example, that we're just out there looking for somebody to be the daddy of our baby. No, that's not our primary concern. Our primary concern is if the condom leaks, uh, we're going to be the next uh, lucky uh, dad. I understand that completely. And Why would we want to be that? Oh no, no, definitely no. They have to watch out for themselves. I think it's it's, it's a two-way street. Don't get me wrong. Well, I'll send the but by not so. doing a single mom, we have much less risk of getting into that situation. But you know what, though? I'm a one hell of a catch, and I do have a wonderful boyfriend now. It's a couple of years since my divorce and whatnot. But I think there are wonderful women that are single moms that just happen to end up with a bad deal. You know but, what I well, mean? Well, again, though, it's too hard for us to figure out which ones are which. It's easier to tell guys, look, uh, women who are single moms, their kid is the priority. And I'm not criticizing them for that. But when I'm in a relationship, I want to be the priority. End of story. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Do you know what? Actually, a guy told me, he said uh, the days are for my, me and my child and nights are for, you know, the, the guy. And I think that's 100% true. The girl puts it like that where she says, you know what? Nighttime's your time. The kid's daytime, my time. And you know what? And any girl that brings her kid right in the relationship in the beginning and says, this is my child, blah, 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 it's obviously out for something else. But if she brings the kid in after like a couple of No, but of he, days, he, even if she doesn't bring the kid in, uh, yeah. I've done the single mom thing. And I've been told, can't get a sitter. Sitter uh, was got sick. Uh, I have to read to my kid tonight. The kid has to get up early, get to school in the morning. Blah blah blah. You know, one reason after another why I couldn't get together alone with this woman and have adult time. Too much hassle. Not worth it. <laughs> And that's someone that also didn't have their stuff together. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more of a pro at having to be in the military and whatnot. And I have to, I guess, spend a little more time. You know what I mean? For me, personally... But the, the woman I'm talking about didn't even have, like, a regular die-to-five job. Then there she goes. She didn't have her stuff together. She wasn't there doing what she had to do. Look, you know? if I have to organize uh, my sex life and put it on your uh, on your schedule, when you have time, whenever that might be, it's just not good <laughs> enough for me. Yeah. I want it when I want it. I don't want it when you have time. I want it when I want it. 
Oh, agreed, agreed. You know what, though? I tell you right now, the $40, the first date deal, I agree with 100%. Good. I really do. Excellent. I, I would say, yes, it's an agreeable deal. But for myself also, well, like, for example, the second or third day, I'll always offer to go Dutch. But I'd rather the guy to say, you know what, honey? I know you work hard, and God only knows you're doing what you can for the country. And I've been in eight years. And well, I you know what? No one ever years. tells guys in the military that they work hard for their country and pay for their dinners. So, uh, you know what? Uh, this, this is a gender thing. It has nothing to do with whether or not you're in the military. Anyway, dear, thank you for the call.